My name is Frances Iverson. The story actually began when I met and married an amazing man. After about one year of marriage, we found out we were going to have a baby, and we were excited. And um, at about 11 weeks, typically you go in for your first ultrasound, and so we were looking forward to that and kept everything a secret and did did what everybody would do, you know. I think it was at 10 weeks. Yeah, I, I remember uh, you woke up in the middle of the night and it was kind of a scary experience. And uh, You thought maybe you were having a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought it was kind of scary and then so we contacted and we scheduled to see the doctor a little sooner. So we didn't do the 11 uh, week checkup. Yeah, so we were about 10 weeks and um, we went in um, and they what they do when you think you're having a miscarriage or something, they will do an ultrasound, I guess. And they went in and did our ultrasound and it was really weird because they didn't see a fetus or anything there. So my body was thinking it was pregnant and so um, that's what's called the molar pregnancy. The body develops um, as if it were pregnant really quickly so like your uterus expands quickly and you feel more sick than a typical pregnant woman would feel and so Anyway, I had all the symptoms of it. A week and a half or two weeks later, I had continued to go in for blood work, and that's why we were so blessed with this doctor, because he didn't let it go. He could have just said, go home for two weeks and come back. But he said, keep checking in. We're gonna do a lot of blood work and tests on you, because he, he really had a premonition. The cysts that had been growing inside of me were not, couldn't, he couldn't completely get them out, and so they had attached to my uterine wall. My uterus was, um, now at that point, it had cancer. Different stages of the cancer, they call it different things. So at one stage, they'll call it gestational trophoblastic disease. That's when it truly becomes this really big cancer. It's called um, choriocarcinoma. When I was told that Francis had cancer, was it was kind of a shock, you know, because the whole thing, going from uh, thinking that we're having a baby to uh, that my wife has cancer now instead of having a baby, that was kind of rough. Uh, not kind of, it was rough, and uh, I, I just was trying to be strong for her. My reaction was, let's get it going. Um, let's not take any more time. I wanna get this out of my body. And for me, it was in my uterus and it spread to my lung. I started my chemotherapy in November of 2012. He said, you will have about 14 days and then your hair will start falling out. And so I'm like, okay, counting down the days, when's that gonna happen? <laughs> And no lie, at 14 days, they just mm. started coming out. I was still teaching and working, um, but I started needing to wear a hat because it was really coming out and I needed to stop myself from <laughs> pulling it out. Um, and I remember it was a Monday and it was a school holiday and I went on a Monday to lunch with a friend and I was wearing a hat and I, I looked at her and I said, I think tonight's the night I'm shaving my hair. She was like, okay, well, you're going to be beautiful. And she kind of pumped me up. Shaved his, too. Or she shaved Ben. You shaved it. Uh, okay, I shaved his. I forgot about it. <laughs> um, Although you wanted to leave big hunks of hair I did, like, all her, over. I made him look really ratty. Ratty.
December of 2012 until April of 2013, my chemotherapy treatments changed completely and they got more difficult and um, I had to have more treatments and more drugs and they made me feel terrible. Yeah. Um, and my numbers still didn't go down. I wasn't getting my zero. I wasn't even getting close to my zero. Oh, yeah. And our prayer became, you know, God, we want a zero. Uh, my mom and I created a little cheer that just said, we're praying for zero, we need a zero, uh, zero for Francis, we're fighting for zero. So zero became this number that everybody around us who knew our story um, started chanting and cheering for. All that we had an appointment with Dr. Bandy, uh, who was in Little Rock, and I remember uh, your mom there being there, and you were there, and I was there. When when you go to see your doctor, if you're having a you know a, a major health thing, you can have your family go back to the room with you if you want. But so when we would see Dr. Bandy, the gynecological oncologist, the specialist. I would always go in first by myself so he could do, you know, an ultrasound and look. And at that point in February, when my numbers hadn't gone down and we had done all the drugs that we were supposed to do, the chemotherapy, and he was doing the ultrasound and there I am with him and his nurse and he shows me on the ultrasound that it's still there. He's like, here it is. So. Yeah, he said I, you know, uh, he said I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to remove your uterus. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't want you to do that. <laughs> um, and he said, well, well, what you're doing right now, what we're doing isn't working, and it's, you can't, your body can't continue to receive those chemotherapy drugs without it killing you. So the only option we have is to remove it. So you would have hysterectomy. And I remember staring at him, saying, well, I want to have my own children. And he said, if I don't take your uterus out, you will not live to see children. He kind of laid out a plan for how the hysterectomy would work. And that was a really, really scary day. Towards the end of, the, of, end of everything after the hysterectomy, we got as close as we could to zero. We kind of call my zero day April the 10th, 2013. Out of kind of my own therapy and going to those conventions, I decided to start doing a little art project on my own where I took just a blank mannequin head because really when you go into the cancer centers or a place where you can buy a wig or um, you know, at the hospitals or at certain stores, the, the mannequin heads are white, just blank white heads. They're very blah is the word, I guess, blah. <laughs> um, they're, they're just there and they have no personality. Um, and when I was at one of the conventions, um, I saw a mannequin head that had been decorated beautifully. Very simple, but beautifully, and I thought, I could do that. So when I came home, I decorated two mannequin heads, took just plain ones and decoupaged them with flowers on one and then words on the other, and those words were words that described me. Um, and then I started telling people about it, what I did, and that it was therapeutic for me, you know, just a, a way to think of how the cancer transformed me. So I'm not just the same Francis anymore. I'm someone, you know, I'm someone new and different and a new creation. And uh, the idea kind of caught on 
And so um, I've developed a program and it's called the Creations of Hope. My name is Frances Iverson and I am a cancer survivor.